Welcome, Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at ClimateViewer.com, ClimateViewer.org, and WeatherModificationHistory.com. Um, brand new Climate Viewer 3D. Going to show it off tonight. If you guys haven't heard about it, it's available at ClimateViewer.org. It is completely free, and it is amazing. Um, some of you may know I've been working on this map. I taught myself to program a couple years ago, three, four, and I work on it const constantly. Um, very excited to show you uh, how Climate Viewer 3D works, why it does what it does, and how this relates to my solution to geoengineering the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. Um, that is available at climateviewer.com slash nmod. Let's put that up in chat for everybody. Right there. And, um, well, the, the thing is, climateviewer.com and climateviewer.org are my way of, you know, doing my good turn daily. Um, I thoroughly enjoy working on uh, Climate Viewer 3D. It's my number one passion. I love mapping. Go figure. They always say a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, Climate Viewer 3D is worth several million. Um, the stuff that you're about to see is not available anywhere else on the internet, let alone in one spot. Um, and I hope you guys will dive into that. So let's let's go over here. And I'm going to bring it up on the screen. And as you can see, when you come to climateviewer.org, you're going to see an open source globe. Now this is based on something called cesium. A little link to it right here. Um, let's see if we can make this a little bigger for you guys, so you guys can see this. Ooh, that actually worked just fine. I hope it doesn't ruin anything later. All right, so I'm just going to, you know, zoom in a little bit on this to make it bigger. So what we have over here, this is your menu bar. Just click the little triple bars. Everybody's used to this button. That gets rid of the menu on the sidebar. But over here we have 514 maps that are available. Everything in the top two are live. They get pulled from the internet when you click it. Live data can't get it anywhere else. Um, or you could get it on you know 200 separate websites. But I like to keep it real and in all in one spot so that it makes it easy for me. Um, I use this pretty much daily so that I can go and, you know, uh, see what's going on in the world, uh, you know, all at a glance. So up here in the top category, we have things like air quality, earthquakes, fire, smoke, volcanic activity, lightning, precipitation and radar, surface observations like wind, hurricanes and tropical cyclones, warnings and watches, and climate viewer reports. Um, Climate Viewer Reports is a reporting app that I created back in 2011, 12, something like that. And it allows you to post your own news um, to, the, to the Climate Viewer interface. Um, and, we'll, you know, so what you can basically see is a whole bunch of reports from 2011 to 2018. And these are from Climate Viewers like you. And as you zoom in here, you can see, like, next red pulse in Paducah. Click here to read all about it take you over to the website. Um, Climate Viewer 3D is loaded with lots of different stuff. And my some of my favorite stuff, obviously, you guys have been uh, seeing the satellite imagery from uh, NASA's Whirlwind. Well, you can get all of that here as well, simply by clicking on any one of these layers right here. What you'll see is that it'll bring up some little simple controls, opacity, which is how clear it is. You can actually make it see-through, pretty fun. Um, you can make it black and white by turning the saturation down. Now you got a black and white image. You can increase the contrast to make it sharper, turn down the brightness, all of that sort of thing. And you can do a little mix of all of the above and come up with some pretty cool looking maps um, and as you can see when you zoom in it gets a little sharper as you zoom out um, same deal so this is pulled from NASA in real time 
and allows you to view, you know, basically all the satellite imagery from yesterday, today. Um, right now it's showing imagery from April 24th. If I click on this, up in the top left corner, it brings up a date chooser, I can choose a different date, like the 16th. And what's it going to do? It's going to load up the image for the 16th. Um, and that allows me to go back in time and see things like, you know, um, hey, somebody said on this date there was such and such. And I can go and change the date on that and go look at that as well. And this will actually take you all the way back to 2000. So you can go out right here. I'm going back to 2010 and April 14th, 2010. And take a look at that. So we get the idea, these are satellite imagery, you can pull them in real time, and there are many different layers on here. The ones at the top are pretty much visual, um, you know, things that you can see with the naked eye, this is what it should look like, but there's some really cool ones in here, like the 367 band, which highlights ship tracks and contrails, things like that. Um, you can really get in there and start seeing things that otherwise are not visible, like these lines right here. So if I were to do the modus terra, as you can see, this is the visible. And then this is with the little enhanced corrections that NASA and company um, will add to it. So many different features on that. Dig through the NASA layers. Um, I've got some stuff from the Morphed Integrated Microwave Imagery, which a lot of people really enjoy. Go like this, and this will actually bring up the animation, which will bring up the timeline at the bottom, which you can zoom through and actually move. Ooh, fun stuff. To clear off everything, there's a trash can right here. Click trash can, removes all the imagery from the layers, takes it off the map. Um, this is this is a great way to combine data to uh, to see things from different perspectives and you know basically find out what's going on in your world so I can come in here and I can look at the air quality and as we can see pretty obvious green is good red is bad here we are in Oklahoma City unhealthy for sensitive groups of ozone layer or ozone at ground level so probably some bad air in that area you could even go so far as to say, well, what is causing that bad air and go look at the satellites? Well, maybe it's fire. Is it fire? Let's find out. Detected in the last 24 hours, red dots, lots of fires over there. Could any of them have something to do with this? Well, it looks like it's burning all across the central plains right here. So we can, let's go with a big one. Let's go with 72 hours. This is always fun. Let's load up both NASA firms and the VIIRS -R -R -I -I same time and what I want you guys to see is this this is worldwide fires check out Africa it is always on fire there it is so this is typical um, you can actually come up to the satellite and see most of these smoke plumes coming off these fires um, this is all real-time data pulled from satellites can't get it anywhere else pretty fascinating stuff let me clear this off real quick. We're going to check out earthquakes. All magnitude 2.5 or higher earthquakes for today. Oh, don't you fail me. Wouldn't you know the freaking USGS feed is down right now. So let's pick a different one. We're going to go with the European med earthquakes. And as you can see, they are right here. And they're color-coded by how soon they happen. So green is most recent, red being later. Um, and you can see there's some fracking earthquakes in Oklahoma, all along the coast over here, and in the usual spots. Lots of things to look at here. If you scroll down to the bottom, there are the NOAA buoys. If I click on NOAA buoys, this is a very large file. Anything with a red eyeball is a very large file. Um, they tend to be bigger files. Just give people a warning. I don't want any surprises uh, when you try to load all that up. Oh my god, I think I left the, the menu um, to build a list, so this is going to take longer than I expected. I'll have to fix that afterwards. Um, and here they go. So this is also active volcanoes. Let me come back out here real quick. 
So now we can see all of the buoys out in the ocean. And why would I need to know about buoys and what do they have anything to do with earthquakes? Well, people know that earthquakes can cause tsunamis. So if you have a very large earthquake, you can come down here to the buoy tracker. You can scroll through the list. I'm going to close that by clicking on this little tree icon. Get that to close back up. But you can click on the buoys and then say see more observational data from there and go over to a website and actually see what the current, you know, like says right here, air temperature, winds, water temperature, yada, yada. Um, we're more concerned about surface wave height. Um, so we tend to look for things like that. And if the waves are coming up really high, you see 15 foot waves on a buoy, obviously, you know, you might have a tsunami on the way. So that's why I included it in the earthquake section. Um, let me clear all this up because we've already got a lot of stuff up there. By the way, these are uh, oil wells out in the Gulf of Mexico. And BP oil spill was not the only oil well out there, so most of you know about that. Um, and as you can see, I've got all those tracked as well. Let me clear this off. And uh, note to self, fix USGS stupid earthquake feed. Um, precipitation radar. We want to see the next rad based radar. This is what it looks like. Again, we have sliders. We can make it opaque. We can make it really sharp. Give it some contrast, brightness, whatever. Lots of fun toys to play with on that. Scroll down. It will redraw itself and get sharper. Um, purpose for this, you know, I want to be able to see, you know, what's going on here. Uh, what's what's the dealio with uh, the weather yo and I typically see some weird stuff like this so right here we see some laser beams are coming out of the next rad station maybe I want to know which next rad station that is well guess what you can do that too if you come down to the section I'm gonna hit collapse which will close everything back up and you'll see climate viewer maps and a picture of me sitting in front of a tree and if you scroll down right here to atmospheric sensors and EMF sites you can scroll down right here and you can actually see all of the next red Doppler stations as you can see I mapped them out Ooh! so now we can actually see which next red station is actually doing that and it's right here in Cheyenne Wyoming it's a call sign is CYS and currently that next red station has a beam that's fixed this way well that's pretty interesting maybe it's a just a graphical glitch well guess what I have a second feed for the next reds as well so I'm gonna come back up here and we're gonna try that one out as well so now let's compare the two what I'm gonna do is this let's go ahead and I'll, I'll close the next reds back off right now because they're kinda getting in my way making it hard to see all the beautiful red odd data so what you do is you got one of these is what the public sees uh, when you're looking at your local TV station, the other is the full, unadulterated, straight, raw feed. So, as you can see, here's the before, here's the after, before, this is what they show you on the news. And, let's turn that up and turn this down. That's the, the more unadulterated unfiltered uh, version so let's see let's come over here and look at this and see what happens is that on there nope surprise surprise so that's why I try to pull as many different data sources as possible when using climate viewer 3d because as you can see they're not always the same so this one's base reflectivity. This is the Ridge 2 feed. Ridge 2 feed's typically used by your National Weather Service guys. That's what they show you on TV. Turn this sucker up and all of a sudden you get all the other little glitches and interesting things that they really don't want you to see filter out or whatever. Things like that. Oh, that could be a very large chemtrail or a flock of birds. Regardless, they will remove that from the other feed and it will not be visible. So just a good idea of how that works. I, also for all you guys um, across the pond, I did include rainfall for the Atlantic Ocean. This is based out of the EU METSAT. Um, this is called METID. And you can see that this one actually is rainfall totals for 
all of that and you can see right there EU Metsat and it has a date 425 right sure so that's uh already tomorrow because they're on the other side of that UTC line but regardless um, click on that one and then click on Indian Ocean IODC underneath it and you'll get a big error apparently I had a major fail boo boo web GL hit a snag let's reload it so just so you know guys know I just updated to to cesium 1.44 and apparently they've had some web jail issues I'm gonna go complain on their full RAM about that but if you ever have any kind of errors like that just hit the F5 button reload it and start over and understand that you know hey I'm teaching myself this stuff I've, I've made built all this for you and I hope you guys will use it. Warnings and watches down here. Um, you can see things like gale warnings off the coast. Um, you know, where they're... What we got here? What's going on around the Great Lakes? Small craft advisory. What's down here? Flood warnings for this area. What's over here in Texas? We got a lot of wind. Wind advisory up here in Wyoming. We got wildfires. Ooh. Bet you we can get an image of that. Let's see if there is any wildfires up there now. I'm going to come down here to NASA, turn that joker on, and look. Oh, of course, it's covered in clouds. Of course, we wouldn't be able to see that today anyway. But we can see these chemtrails right here. <laughs> Fascinating stuff. Wonder if that get highlight gets a highlight on here. No, not much different, but regardless, there's your chemtrails. So, a lot of people ask me, they say, Hey, Jim, what about all those uh, those crosses in the sky, I keep saying. And I said, you know, man, if I could just get a flight route thing, that'd be really cool. Well, guess what? I just found one. So, down here in my section, Climb of Your Maps, at the bottom under Other Interesting Maps, you can see Flight Routes in the USA. Take a go gander at this. So these are your grids in the sky. Um, there are highways in the sky. Most people don't know about these things. But this is kind of what it looks like. This isn't even all of them. I'm still working on getting them all together. Um, but I see a lot of crosses. I don't know about you. I see a lot of crosses. And that's why we basically have planes dumping metal all across the United States on a daily basis. Um, and they tend to form up grid patterns because these are controlled by computer. The computer system is called Next Gen and it runs out of the FAA. Fascinating stuff for me. I hope that you enjoy uh, looking at things like this. Um, for those who love pyramids, pyramids of the world. Oh, yeah. Did you know that all the pyramids of the world tend to line up around certain locations? Very fascinating, especially along this red line right here. There are a lot of pyramids. Is that a coincidence? I have no clue, but it looks like it to me. So take a look at that. This is called Pyramids of the World. Um, Terry, uh, do flight routes include flights specifically for SRM? That's a good question. No, this is just a generalized FAA flight route plan. Shows where the major destinations, obviously Atlanta being the largest one. Um, it's just showing routes to and from major airports at this point. I did have live flight tracking in, when I was still on Google Earth. I intend to get that back. And I did just recently find a good source for that. But what you can find is if you come over here to geoengineering and weather modification you can find things like uh, SRM field experiments check it out things like EPs the Eastern Pacific Emitted Aerosol Cloud Experiment and what they basically did was they created ship tracks out in the Pacific Ocean to make clouds to find out if it's cooling the planet and you can see here's where they they did it. It's off the coast of Marina, California, and they basically had a boat that was burning an oil mixture, and it created clouds. Um, over here, we have the access flights, sulfur dope fuel, um, jet fuel. Uh, sulfur doping is a thing. Um, basically, they want to add a lot of 
sulfur at high altitude. The, the quote goes like this, applying high fuel sulfur content at aviation cruise altitude combined with ultra low sulfur jet fuel at takeoff will kill less people around airports and cool the planet. So biofuels are all the rave. They're talking about using biofuels for contrail control. As you can see here, stratospheric sulfur, sulfate injections with commercial aircraft. And a chart at the bottom here. Ooh, it looks like I'm in the way. Let me move me out of the way for a second. And uh, it's going to be still hard to see. Come over here to geoengineering SRM field experiments. You'll see it on the sidebar. It's in, in the climate viewer maps geoengineering section. So, um, and information on that here. And this is the cloud making rocket at uh, Stennis Air Force Base. I don't got, know if you guys ever heard about that thing. Um, of course, over here in the UK, we had the SPICE project, stratospheric particle injection for climate engineering. And they basically wanted to use a balloon to spray some water to do some testing of geoengineering. This is exactly what David Keith will be doing um, in uh, Arizona come this fall. So take a look at that. It's a precursor to what happened. And of course, we will oppose that as well. ETC Group and Friends of the Earth shut this down. So the SPICE project never actually happened. So hopefully we can repeat some history and shut down the geoengineering project that David Keith is planning to do in Arizona. Um, field experiments on studying solar radiation management, Israel et al. 2009. This was in Russia. Russia basically used a truck with an aerosol generator and then measured how much sunlight was blocked. They also used a hind helicopter. If any of you guys uh, watched the Rambo movies back in the day, that's that Russian helicopter that he shot with an explosive arrow and blew it up. Well, this is a Russian helicopter deploying chemtrails to do geoengineering. All in one map. Um, finally, hygroscopic hygro flares down in uh, Africa, another geoengineering study down there. So these are the geoengineering projects that I have on a map, but that compares nothing to the UCAR programs like ACE, Southern Hemisphere Marine Aerosol Characterization Experiment, um, Acclaim, Airborne Coherent LiDAR for Advanced In-Flight Measurements, um, the list goes on, Adele Sprite Airborne Detector for Energetic Lightning Emission and Sprite Spectra. This was done down in Florida, and as you can see here, we still have a picture. No, the picture's bad. Of course it is. Um, link to the UCAR page there. But regardless, they were looking at, uh, you know, basically, if you don't know what a sprite or elves are, they're basically upward lightning, lightning coming out of the top of clouds. And it's important because people who use things like harp um, want to be able to make these sorts of things. Global Weather Modification Projects by Weather Modification Incorporated. You can see where they were modifying the weather. Snowpack augmentation here. Uh, hail damage mitigation and rain enhancement here. Um, the list goes on. These are just from Weather Modification Incorporated. As you can see, there are some from around the world. I will be mapping many more of these projects in the near future. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, have you guys heard of HARP in 1965? What I'd like to do now is show you some new little feature. If you come down here to base globe, that's how you can change the bottom, the base of the globe, and actually see the satellite. You can choose between ESRI, ESRI aerial or Bing aerial. If you click on Bing, that's going to bring up the Microsoft version of the map. This is um, by ESRI, the guys who make ArcGIS. Um, but regardless, it'll allow you to fly down and actually see um, things that, you know, from satellite view. I'm going to come down here, and apparently, this cannon was used to do uh, the HARP project. And you can see that over on weathermodificationhistory.org. Or, uh, did I really do that? Yeah, there we go. 
it worked. Project High Altitude Research Program, HARP cannons launch chemical payloads into sky. Um, and you can see the photos on that. Why are they not loading? My internets are not behaving today. Of course, it's a live show. What you expect? So, lots of uh, interesting stuff there. So, this cannon, 1965, was called HARP, the High Altitude Research Program. They were firing aluminum and barium into space with shells. You cannot make this stuff up. Why are my pictures not loading? My God. Moving along, here are cloud seeding generators from across America. Let's go down here to this one. And of course, see this is what happens when you load a new map and you don't test it before you go live. <laughs> um, over here, I'm going to jump to the, obviously I'm having some uh, technical difficulties with these cloud seeding generators because none of the freaking icons are coming up. So apparently I need to proxy that as well because now they're blocking them, which is always fun. I will fix that and we will do this again. Regardless, um, come down here to the government uh, surveillance um, section and you can see things like Five Eyes, the Stone Ghost Surveillance Network. Now, hey, how many people in, uh, in chat have heard of the Five Eyes? Anybody? Nobody? Curious. The Five Eyes are Australia, New Zealand, Canada, US, and UK also known as the five eyes of the new world order and what they do is they have things like the NSA Utah data facility this data center contains basically everything you know you ever typed into the internet if you click the little camera icon right here it'll zoom you right down to the ground and you can see the facility itself so that you know that these photos aren't just fake. I literally put all of these dots directly where they belong. Um, this Utah data facility is basically everything you're hearing about on the TV right now about FISA abuses. FISA abuses. What's up, Max Mogram, my dog? We got to do a show, brother man, soon. I got my webcam working, as you can see. I got new internets. Um, so the, the, basically what I want you guys to take away from this five eyes thing, while they're talking about FISA abuses and how Obama and company, um, abused the FISA courts, what they're really saying is that they got permission from a FISA court judge to use the NSA stone ghost network, which consists of all of these spy facilities from around the world which are five eyes members oh wait there's 13 eyes but i only mapped out the five what does that mean you can fly over here and see things like the joint defense facility at pine gap now this is in australia these uh white domes are basically listening in um you know, to, to, to find out basically everything going on, you know, most of this stuff is satellite based now. So what do you expect? You're going to get, uh, you know, you're going to get, uh, these satellites listening in on your cell phone conversations, these little radar dishes, and they're going to route that through their network, um, back home to America over here to the DC Triangle where all of the guys hang out at the National Maritime Intelligence Center or the Beltsville Information Management Center or NSA headquarters at Fort Meade, Dorsey Road Warehouse, Friendship Annex, George Bush Center for Intelligence or CIA HQ. Um, guys, I just uploaded this uh, new version of the map today so apparently I'm gonna have to go through and find out why. A lot of these images are not working and really it makes very little sense to me because they're not there man why are they not there I just don't get it I mean has anybody seen my images because bro I'm really no Jerry no nothing anybody it's just not 
it's there today. <laughs> anyway, that's my fun uh, 404. So let me let me figure out what's going on with that real quick. We'll live, we're live. Why not? I'll just go look. Climateviewer.org slash image slash gallery slash that picture is freaking there. Why is it not there? We will fix that. Apparently, I have some images missing um, during my upload. But this image is there. The Aerospace Data Facility East. Um, any, again, you can come right down here and every one of these you go to, you're going to see one of these big white balls and these big white balls are basically listening into everything. So that's what's, that's what FISA abuse is about. That's what the Democrat party made up a lie to get access to. By the way, they're not the only ones. Uh, Monsanto does the same thing. Um, in the original WikiLeaks, you can read this on the privacy page. Come over here to climateviewer.com slash privacy and you'll see New World Order Technocrats and the Surveillance State. Just scroll on down through here. Here are the 14 eyes. Five eyes, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, US, UK. Nine eyes include Denmark, France, Netherlands, and Norway. 14 eyes, Germany, Belgium, Italy, Spain, Sweden. All of these together form the New World Order. And this new world order shares signals intelligence. So this is what they're, that's what they're talking about. When they say FISA abuse, they're talking about what Snowden was talking about. They're talking about people abusing the NSA, GCHQ, this entire network. All of them together is called Stone Ghost. And you can read all about that right here. Here's what's funny about it. How, do, how does the deep state spy on Americans? And we all know that it was a British guy. Well, here you go. Britain's GCHQ intelligence agency can spy on anyone but British nationals. The NSA can conduct surveillance on anyone but Americans. And Germany's BND foreign intelligence agency can spy on anyone but Germans. That's how the matrix is created. A boundless surveillance in which each partner aids in a division of roles. The documents show that in this situation, the services did not did what is not only obvious, but also anchored in German law. They exchanged information and they worked together extensively. That applies to British and Americans, but also the BND, which assists the NSA in its Internet surveillance. So here's how it works. In order to spy on Americans, the Russian, uh, the Americans basically asked the British people, hey, Brits. Could you uh could you use some of your surveillance facilities to spy on Americans because that'd be real nice. And as you can see here are the different locations. You can actually fly around to these simply by clicking on the list over here. So let's go to since my photos aren't working, let's just go actually look at it. And I'll fix my photos later. So this is GCHQ. Ain't that a spaceship looking, a lot of money spent on a building looking cool. Um, GCHQ basically spies on Americans for the NSA. And vice versa, the NSA spies on Brits for GCHQ. This is a revolving door. Um, and they have many different facilities. This is at Scarborough. You can see here, that's one of their buildings. You can go to Ascension Island. All the way down here, if you guys have never been here, this is a very interesting island to say the least. Lots of uh, facilities there. And GCHQ um, boot, I think that's how it's pronounced. And you can see all of the satellite stations there. Um, if you don't like how the satellite imagery looks on one, on the ESRI, click over here to Bing Aerial and see if it's any better. Um, we got a couple different versions of that. It's under Base Globe. You can also make the world 3D if you want to see mountains and stuff. Just click right here. So that's my story. When it comes to you know stealing your information, tracking everything you do, they basically go and connect up to these underwater cables as well. And what you'll start to notice is if you look undersea cables. Everything that crosses the um, Pacific ends up at an NSA facility. And there's one in Guam. Here's up in Japan. 
And these are all connected together for a reason. This is down in New Zealand. And these these all together, this is just the five eyes. This is not the nine and the thirteen included, which Germany is in the thirteen, right? Ooh, they didn't like that. Germany, Belgium are in the fourteen eyes, excuse me. So um I actually heard Angela Merkel on NPR going, Hey, wait a minute. Why are we not a member of the five eyes? Why are you know, what's up with this Ozcan Zuckus thing? Ozcan Zuckus is the naval term for how this all started. The story goes like this. We were in World War II. Um, Britain's getting his ass handed to it. And we said, well, you know, America, we'll come save your ass like we did in World War One. But in order for that to happen, you have to give us all of your intelligence. And that was called the British-UK Agreement. You can read about that in here. Um... And that's how this whole spy versus spy revolving door thing happened. Well, here's the problem. Here's the thing nobody wants to admit. Canadian Navy spy sold NSA secrets to Russia for 3 k a month. Everything that's going on with Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and the abuse of the NSA network, I'm not going to call it FISA abuse because that's just skirting the issue. Um, it, you know, it all happened before. There was a guy up in Canada. Um, I could probably show you the facility. Even so, we go up to Canada. Here's a Canadian facility. Um, wait, that's I just clicked on a wire. I think here's a Masset, and that's an older one. So let's go over here. This is the NSA CFS Lightrum um, is probably, and there's also CFS Alert, Gander, and Masset. You can see all the locations they have up in Canada. But basically, some dirt bag who worked at this NSA or this um, CFS, I guess it's Canadian Forces Station Lightrum. So the Canadian version of the NSA, they had a mole. And the mole was selling all of that information to Russia for only $3,000 a month. That's pretty damn cheap and scary. Quote, it's a computer system that links the five eyes. The five eyes are United States, Britain, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. All their information is shared on the Stone Ghost computer. So the Stone Ghost network connects all of them together. Oh, by the way... Israel has full access to Stone Ghost. Um, Glenn Greenwald actually put this out, and it said the National Security Agency routinely shares raw intelligence data with Israel. And here's that memorandum, real as rain. And the thing that's interesting about this stuff is you'll usually see top, so top secret comment rel to USA F-V-E-Y. F-V-E-Y means five eyes. And this is where basically the raw signals intelligence or unmasked data goes to Israel. It gets worse. U.S. corporations use Stone Ghost. Europe fears U.S. corporations benefit from what was used to call Echelon. Echelon... Um, then became Prism, became, you know, they have many different names for the same thing, but basically we're all talking about the Stone Ghost Network. And as you can see, McDonnell Douglas, uh, now part of Boeing, won a multi-billion dollar contract instead of Airbus because the NSA acted as a whistleblower and because they stole information by hacking. Raytheon won a $1.3 billion contract with the government of Brazil to monitor the Amazon rainforest after the U.S. CIA, acting as a whistleblower, reported Raytheon's French competitor, Thomas Alcatel, had been paying bribes to get the contract. That's the NSA working on behalf of U.S. corporations through their Stone Ghost Network. Stone Ghost Network versus WikiLeaks. U.S. defense contractors hired to use cyber warfare and social media sock puppets to sway public opinion against WikiLeaks, discredit journalists, activists. People like myself, people like Max Mogram, we've all had this happen. Um, you know, Max is from Wake Up News. If you're telling the truth and you're out there and, you know, you're, you're really just trying to 
to hammer this home for people and get people to see the big picture you know really um what the what the problem is is that they create fake Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube accounts to post online as if they were real ple- people to influence your opinion. These are called sock puppets. More importantly, the proper term that the military uses is called persona management software. This is a, from me to you to the Anons and the, the tech-friendly world people out there. I'm going to use some real technical tar- jargon real quick. But basically... Um, you can use something called a virtual machine. It's VMware. And VMware allows you to open an operating system inside an operating system. And what it allows people like the NSA, people like Monsanto, any corporation, they all have these now. They can basically load up a Windows 98 machine inside their machine. And then they can load five of them. So what happens is the NSA supplies an operator, usually a defense contractor, with a pre-made, you know, individual, and like say his name is Bob Dorkhead. And literally they go and they double click on Bob Dorkhead.iso, which is an ISO, it's an image file. They load it up in a virtual machine. And now when they log into that Windows, they can go to Facebook, they're already logged in, they're on Twitter, they're already logged in, they're already logged in on YouTube, and all of these have lengthy histories with family photos, they look real, nobody could tell them from a hole in the wall. This allows them to discredit um, you know, Julian Assange, uh, Glenn Greenwald and company, and uh, those are called sock puppets and uh, persona management software. It gets worse. Stone Ghost and Monsanto versus anti-GMO activists in Paris. Now, let me blow this up good. So I want you guys to see this. This was in the original WikiLeaks. And this is why at ClimateViewer.com I talk about three things. Pollution, privacy, and propaganda. If you try to fight pollution or geoengineering, if you try to fight GMOs, if you try to fight anything, your privacy will be violated and propaganda will be made about you. Case in point, this is the United States State Department using the NSA Stone Ghost Network to work for Monsanto. And I'll prove it right here. Basically, they say that, you know, common interest in France, the authority's first task is to review MON 810, which is a Monsanto 810 version of their genetically modified corn. Activists don't want it. The law would make farmers and seed companies legally liable for pollen drift and sets the stage for inordinately large cropping distances. Basically, they were going to make a law that says if Monsanto's, you know, mutant seeds blow into your field, that you could sue them, as opposed to being the other way around, the way it is currently. Monsanto can basically sue your ass if, you know, anyway. We won't get into that. Um, <clears throat> this is the scariest thing I read in, in, in all of the WikiLeaks. Um, the environmental minister's top aide told us that people have a right not to buy meat raised by, on biotech feed, even though she acknowledged there was no possible scientific basis for feed-based distinction. Further, we should not be prepared to seed on cultivation because of our considerable planting seed business in Europe. This is a State Department ca- cable. This is coming from the State Department to... Um, you know, the the consulate in France, okay? And this is what's so scary about it. Country Team Paris recommends that we calibrate a target retaliation list that causes some pain across the EU. Since this is a collective responsibility, but also focuses in part on the worst culprits, the list should be measured rather than vicious and must be sustainable over the long term since we should not expect an early victory. Copy pasted in chat. Um, that is the United States State Department using the NSA network 
to find activists in France and cause make a target retaliation list that causes some pain. You want the link for that? Number 15. I'm going to come down here to references. Click on that. Go to 15. Here it is right here. Here is that country team Paris WikiLeak. All of these references are available on climateviewer.com slash privacy. They have been there since 2008 because I was talking about this before Snowden. Now, I want you guys to send that cable to everybody you ever met that talks about Monsanto or talks about genetically modified this or that and realize that basically when they're talking about FISA abuses on the TV, what they're really talking about is abusing the Stone Ghost Network, the five eyes, stone, 14 eyes Stone Ghost Network. Because not only did Hillary and Obama freaking abuse that, Monsanto abuses it. By the way, this is an American State Department official working for Monsanto using the NSA network that Snowden was complaining about. I've been complaining about this since it was still called Echelon. Um, you can look it up on Twitter, at Resonated. I was a member of Anonymous for several years. I'm not going to say how long. Um, and that's when I learned all this stuff. Um, you know, I started to look into the H.B. Gary hacks. And H.B. Gary Federal, Palantir Barrico, and Palantir Technologies were basically creating all these fake sock puppets to discredit an American journalist, Glenn Greenwald. So if the NSA has fake accounts, works for Monsanto, works for the Obama-Hillary camp, if they will use this spy, this massive spy facility, which you can see only on climateviewer.org, which is why Climate Viewer 3D is the internet's best kept secret. They do not want people to see this. This is damaging, to say the least. Also, well, I, well it really went off on a tangent about that, but it's in the news and I think people should know. Um, Department of Homeland Security Fusion Centers right here. You can see all those. Um, I read some nice uh, Department of Homeland Security Fusion Center reports on activists. I'm pretty sure I have a lengthy rap sheet right there. They probably are constantly worried. When's Jim going to say go blow something up? Unfortunately for them, I'm a Boy Scout and I'm nonviolent unless it is absolutely necessary. So I do this for educational purposes. I want people to know. I'm going to go uh, also show you UAV drones in America. These are drones operated by police stations, universities, yada yada, military. Um, information on that right here. You can actually see RPA Department of Defense operations activities current and projected. Here is a, a map where I got that information from. Pretty scary stuff. Global hogs, hunters, predators, and the like. This will only grow over time. So this is all available in the government and surveillance section. The stuff I'm showing you right now. Close that up. Drone no-fly no zones. UAV drone strikes in Pakistan. Another issue why the CIA is so on President Trump and wants his ass out is because Obama authorized the CIA to make war. And when the CIA is allowed to use drones to indiscriminately kill, um, that really causes problems. And as you can see here, wherever these blue dots are, you can click on the blue dots, and it'll tell you. Location, not going to pronounce it. Killed, five to six. Al-Qaeda Taliban leaders killed, unknown. Al-Qaeda... Taliban killed five to six. Source the news. Don AFPGO. Assumed target funeral procession of victims from earlier missile strike. <laughs> you gotta love that. So CA blows up some people. They're on their way to the funeral, and then they strike the funeral as well. Now, I don't. I'm not passing judgment on whether these are good people or bad people, but the CIA should not be making war. 
So when Obama and company authorized the CIA to do what they did, that's how we end up this way. Big problems. Big, big problems. All right, so let me close this out. I'm going to click the trash can right here. And we'll check out the nuclear section real quick. Um, mo most of you, well, before we do that, most of you guys already know I've got HARP on here. You can actually fly down to the HARP facility right there. Let's put the satellite back on, go back down to base globe. We'll go to ESRI, and we'll go to Bing. And you can see the HARP facility there. Click on this and read all about HARP. There you go. Lots of information on that. You can click right here, Harp and the Sky Heaters. Come over to climateviewer.com slash harp. What's my page doing? Why is my page not loading? Oh, the NSA's pissed. They're pissed. There goes my internets, people. As you can see, I'm over on my page. My page works just damn it fine. Let's see what we can do. To get around this. I swear if I have to throw a VPN up midstream, that's gonna be ridiculous. Go to the geoengineering page, scroll down to harp, click on harp. There it is. More than one way to skin a cat. Well, anyway, you come over here. This is the harp page, and as you can see here, it's the map. Map of ionosphere heaters worldwide. You can click on this, it'll take you over here, let you look at that. And I do have all of the ionosphere heaters from around the world also mapped. Zoom out. You can fly around to those like the Tromso Array over in Norway. There you go. Click on that. See the photos. Lots of different photos for that. There's what it looks like. There's three separate harps there, ionospheric heaters. And you can see those on the satellite. Pretty fascinating stuff. Missile Defense Radars, Star Wars Space Fence, shout out to Alana Freeland under an ionized sky. Um, check out her book um, on the Space Fence. But you can actually see the Space Fence here. This is the Navispasser. Um, it goes right across the lower belt of the U.S. They're here, here, and here. All the way across. That's the original Space Fence. They've upgraded it since then. We have over the horizon uh, off B as they're known uh, radars from around the world. I have a particular fascination with these things like pay pause and um, did a, a lot of research on this. I spent three years creating these maps. Um, they're only available on climateviewer.org. I hope you guys will check them out. And again, you can fly around and see them just by clicking here. Go over to Australia and see the Jindali Operational Radar Network, or what's known as JORN. It's their version of HARP. Uh, many different ones. There's a transmit site. Here's the next transmit site over here. They look pretty interesting. Pretty fascinating stuff. Um, all about the facts. Just trying to map it out, figure out where everything is. And uh, let's see what else we got over here. Well, more than you can shake a stick at. Jorn Telstra Defense Transmit Station here, Hearts Range. Um, all around the world. And you can just roll through these. Is the Swordfish Radar Nostradamus. This is over in France. Um, it's actually on an airfield. And you can see it right there. This little triangular shaped thing right here is actually a uh, very large radar. Very large to say the least. Um, go around, check them out. Lots of photos to look at. That's the one uh, B Muse. That sucker is huge. Look at this thing. Wow, right? I mean, wow. That's a monster. These things make harp look small. Um, optical effects have been reported above these missile defense radars, so they technically do the exact same thing that harp does. They just say they're doing it for a different reason. It's for missile defense. Under that, we got the super super dual auroral radar network. These are called super darn, and they work with the harp facility, with the other ionosphere heaters around the world, like Arecibo. Um, the one down in Gicamarca, Peru, which is actually a super darn, but it is also 
more powerful than HARP, coming in at a whopping 4.5 megawatts. Um, kind of makes HARP look small. HARP's uh, 3.6 megawatts. That's millions of watts. Um, lots of information on that. Photos on that as well. So all of that's available in the um, atmospheric sensors and EMF sites section of Climate Viewer Maps. I barely scratched the surface of this thing. Like I said, there's 514 maps here. Um, we'll just do a couple of these nuclear ones as well. Click on the nuclear section, you can see 2,053 nuclear test explosions, boiling water reactors, and let me start from the bottom, makes it easier, other reactors, gas-cooled reactors, light water react, graphite reactors, pressurized heavy water reactors, pressurized water reactors, and boiling water reactors like the one in Fukushima. They are color-coded, and you can fly to any one of them. Um, HARP was, was shut down briefly. It was sold to the University of Alaska. It has been back online several times since. Most recently, it was on from the 6th through the 14th of last month. I did a video on that. Um, you can actually come over to climateviewer.com and see that right here. Uh, let's see. HARP, back, uh, HARP bakes Alaskan sky tomorrow night back online link for you in chat there you go um, and that'll give you all the background on that but basically they sold it to the University of Alaska there's this dude named Christy Fallen he's a uh, you know basically tweeting about it on a daily um, basis he has a website up called Gokona Harpoon which is harp info but <laughs> harpoon I mean I don't, uh, it's maybe it's a joke or something but anyway they're right back at it, um, and you can see the the links. You know, watch the video; it'll tell you all about it. But you can see the links right here. Harp facility to resume ionospheric research this week, 04 2018. So yes, Harp was shut down. They sold it to the University of Alaska. It's back online. That's why we we be talking about it. Here's all the nuclear reactors of the world. Um, Pretty fascinating stuff. You come through here, you can look at each one. I actually added a photo to almost all of these. I don't think there's very few that don't have one. And yes, that is a nuclear reactor that is underwater. Uh, that's a Cooper, um, United States of America. There you go, boiling water reactor, originally constructed in 1968. This is a photo of it flooded, just like Fukushima. Uh, looks like they got some sandbags up around here trying to keep the water out. Pretty scary stuff. So in order to monitor that, you can come up here to the rain section, live alerts, precipitation radar, and this really big one, U.S. flood levels, AHPS. We're going to try to let it load while we're live on the Internet streaming. And it'll color code it and tell you where the rivers are currently flooding. So wherever you see pink like this, it'll tell you latest ob observational value, 12.26 feet, major flood stage at 12 feet. So it's currently flooding right there, it's flooding right here, 15 foot, moderate flood stage, 15 foot. This is almost 16 foot um, high. So this is how you can monitor uh, river floods all around the world. I typically look at this and I'll go, hey man, is it flooding near a nuke? Because we all know what happened over in Fukushima. And during Hurricane Harvey, I was actually tracking that down here on the coast of Texas. We had a couple nuclear facilities that were in harm's way. As you can see, this is South Texas 1. Um, it was right in the center of Hurricane Harvey. So I was monitoring all of these flood stations around it. It was bad. Luckily, we didn't have any major events. I'm going to turn that off now. It's a very big map. Don't try this at home unless you got a lot of RAM. And a spare moment for it to load because it's a big file. Other things you can see in here, 10 most radioactive places on Earth. Let me clear all these out. Um, the Three Mile Island meltdown and fallout related to it. 
radiation emissions and cancer incidents within 10 miles of the Three Mile Island. Um, you can see the Chernobyl meltdown and these should fly you to the locations and that is the actual Chernobyl reactor and you can see a picture of it when it blew up right there and then my cesium blows up so let's go ahead and reload that and do it again WebGL hit a snag gotta love this stuff and close out all the NSA links maybe that'll help <laughs> um, so back to that we go to the Chernobyl fallout I'm going to scroll over here and it's going to show you that I modeled the radiation from Chernobyl in 3D. And you can see the Fukushima Daiichi meltdown over here. It'll fly you right down to the ground, let you see that. There you go. These are the intake valves. These are the ones that blew up. And pictures of the damage. Scroll out, see the fallout related to it. I modeled this in 3D as well. If you click on it, you can see where I got that model data from. So I basically overlaid this on a map and then I extruded it in 3D. Tons of fun. Radioactive seawater. That's the radiation, the cesium dispersal into the Pacific. This is as of one year after the explosion. The explosion occurred March 11th, 2011. And good lord, they're really just hating on me today. Get off my computers. Mr. Cesium, you're behaving badly for me on my live screen. So that was the, the uh, radioactive seawater. And of course, we have tsunami debris as well really fun stuff for some reason some of these image overlays are causing webgl issues i'm going to report this to the cesium guys immediately they'll get it all fixed up um and then you know 2053 nuclear explosions 10 most radioactive places on earth we'll load that one as well and we'll just take a look at that real quick so the the fascinating thing about this for me is that you really can't get this information anywhere else. Um, these are uh, toxic waste dumps off the Somali coast, people dumping their nuclear waste on the coast of Somalia, and then people wonder why they're doing so much pirating. Um, these are the pirate areas around um, Somalia that everybody was complaining about. Of course, we've got Sella Field up here in, uh, in uh, the UK. Let's see. And uh, we got Hanford over in America. The Hanford nuclear site's up here. Creepy stuff. For some reason, none of my nuclear icons are loading. I mean, what, what's up with that? Guess we'll have to do a little plugging away on that tomorrow. But regardless, um, more information you can shake a stick at. These are all the nuclear explosions that happened in Nevada. People have ever heard of the downwinders. They were downwind of all of these nuclear test explosions. Um, some of them were way up in the air like this. And we'll turn the satellite on so you can take a look at that. And uh, you can actually, on these, you can actually see the hole in the ground. What I do? What I do? Let's zoom back out. I went too fast and got underneath the world. But you can actually see the holes in the ground for that. Boom. Click on the, end, the thing and it'll tell you this is USA Whetstone. Um, and it was done at a height of 1184 meters. Oh, excuse me. This was underground. This is an underground shaft. So they blew it up from under the ground to see what would happen. Um, usually these will have a circle associated with it to show you where the blast radiuses are. And, most of these holes, they're still here today. Um, so there's that. And you can also see the ones like Starfish Prime, some of the, the larger upper atmospheric testing they did, like out in freaking space. These actually, this one in particular, Starfish Prime, led to um, the banning of upper atmospheric nuclear explosions altogether. It was called the Limited Test Ban Treaty. 
Um, and basically it says right here, fish bowl, starfish prime, high altitude effects test, W49 warhead, on a Thor missile burst seen in Hawaii, EMP effects in Oahu. Okay? So where's Hawaii in relation to this? Let me zoom myself up this way so we can zoom out. And we can see that Hawaii is over here. And that far away, this explosion in space was knocking out power poles and causing EMP effects in Hawaii. That's why they're concerned now about, you know, an EMP attack on America. If one was done in space, it could literally fry our internet, our power, everything. Um, these are nuclear explosions from around the world. Let's not leave Rush out because they've been very naughty. And we can see all of theirs. Um, here's one hot spot right here. This is called the Mayak Triangle. I believe it's called the Mayak Triangle. What's it called? Semi Plaid. Palantinsk, semi Palantinsk test site. Um, this is one of the most radioactive places on Earth. It's in my 10 most radioactive for obvious reasons. I mean, take a look. That's a lot of freaking explosions. And of course, the Russians also tried to nuke the Arctic. Um, you can see that up here. This is near the North Pole, and they were basically trying to blow it up as well. So that's 2053 nuclear explosions. Only available on climateviewer.org. Um, you're not going to find that anywhere else. So guys, this is climateviewer.org. Um, it's my personal love. I hope you guys will support me. Patreon down here at the bottom. GoFundMe, PayPal, your choice. Um, this is free. There are no ads on it. There never will be. Because this is about the truth and getting it out there. Um, I didn't even mention my reading map right here. It's a good friend of mine. His name is George Stiller. He has 160 maps in his section. Um, and he his website used to be called myreadingmap.com. Google shut him down and deleted all of his maps. I reached out to him. I said, man, your maps are valuable. I hope that people will be able to continue to use these. And we got in touch, and the rest is history. They're now available here. You can see things like historic ships preserved in Google Earth. So these are sunken ships, ship graveyards, sunken ships of the Atlantic. Um, just fascinating stuff. I mean, the guy is a beast. Look at that. That's sunken ships, guys. Look at how many freaking sunken ships he found. That alone... You could spend hours going through these. And yes, they all have details and links. Empire Endurance. You can go dig into this for thousands and thousands of hours. He has things like crime sprees, disease outbreaks like the Ebola um, outbreaks, worldwide outbreak of SARS, meningitis outbreak of 2012-2013, MERS, mad cow disease, and things like that. Explorers, um, you know, all of the great explorers of the world, where they went, Lewis and Clark's expedition. I mean, you guys have heard of Lewis and Clark, right? Wouldn't you like to see exactly where they went? Well, you can do that on Climate Viewer 3D, thanks to George Stiller and yours truly. Uh, let me put it back on the black because it makes it easier to see, but that's the Lewis and Clark expedition right there, mapped out for you. Um, fascinating stuff, you know, the Oregon Trail things like that not gonna find it anywhere else these are unique maps fossil sites government um, places affected by the 2013 shutdown fortune 500 companies that received government subsidies while avoiding paying taxes this is the map that got uh, George Stiller kicked off of Google Maps as you can imagine why I'm um, pretty sure these companies didn't like admitting that they don't even pay taxes like DuPont. Three-year total, 2008 to 2010, domestic profit, $2,124 million. Woo! Profit, $2 billion in profit. Tax subsidies, $815 million. Lobbying expenses, $13.8 million. Federal taxes, minus... 72 million. Oh my God. It makes me want to throw up. 
so yeah it's not cool um you know if i had 13.8 million dollars and could head my ass up to um congress you know maybe i wouldn't have to pay taxes either but shit we don't have that kind of money so we all know how that goes migration uh, i think this is where the oregon california and mormon trails pretty fascinating stuff very educational read all about it um he you know george really the fact that google would delete this stuff is insane to me the fact that it's back and available only on climateviewer.org priceless so i hope that you guys will share this because this is one of the internet's best kept secrets for a reason i think i've clearly demonstrated that to you by showing you the government surveillance section i was actually interviewed by an nsa guy on my um beach trip with my family um i had an nsa operative come up and talk to me about my climate viewer map and why i have all um why why i have all this stuff up on uh on the internet and i told him i said you know with what you guys are doing you know with this stone ghost network and uh I, and, and letting monsanto use it let alone what hillary and obama and the democrat party did with it it's ripe for abuse and people should know and that's why it's on the map and it's gonna stay and i really don't care what you think about that um but you know even the nsa guy kind of agreed with me says you know we've got a lot of people who work for the nsa now who are just shaking their heads going this is not what we came here for you know this is not what we signed up for so guys that's just a that's just a, a you know guy from south carolina Taught myself to program, mapped it all out for your pleasure. I hope you guys will really dig into it, not just give it a cursory look. Um, most people don't have the, the, the stomach for this sort of thing. If you want to know how to use it, you can always click right here at the top where it says About, and then there's instructions right here. Let me go back to where you guys can actually see what's going on. Um, you go instructions right here after you click the about button it's going to pop out you know this little thing and then you hit instructions it'll pop up a tutorial video um, this is the last tutorial video I did before changing it to that older version the, the, the last version I had which I didn't really like and now I've gone back to the one that I coded myself um, and it's got like all the buttons it tells you how to use it and everything there um, updates right here you can see April 23rd uh, 2018 complete redesign 40 plus new layers and discord chat i did include discord chat in here now so if you click on that it's gonna say you've been invited to join climate viewer chat i hope that you guys will all do that because i'd love to see you over there um this is where i'm going to be doing my chatting period um just fire it up like that and as you can see we've already got some people in there and we've been chatting it up um link in the details here let me go right here to climateviewer.com because i can actually copy the link it's also available right here at the top of climateviewer.com there's a chat button right there let me drop that over here for you guys that is your personal invite to my chat i hope you guys will hope to see you over there um it does have voice i haven't tried that out yet but i hope to be doing like a monthly little discussion with you guys um so i can get in touch with um you know you and answer some of your questions i see a suspicious observer got a little link in my chat there earlier a guy um dropped me some nice little harp ring photos check that crap out what i said harp ring i meant next red ring originally they were called harp rings don't get me started on that story um all right, am I going to post this broadcast so I can catch up on parts of Mr. Mar? It's being posted right now. This is live. Um, you will be able to hit the rewind button and go back. Also, guys, you know, I'm over on uh, YouTube. The, here's the ironic part. I heard Max's show earlier today, Wake Up News. You guys should all go subscribe to Wake Up News. Um, Max Mogram is a longtime friend. Um, we go way, way back. And he made an excellent point, and I'd just like to point it out for you guys right here. You know, I got 10,510 subscribers over on YouTube. And, you know, my last video got 719 views. 
I went to a weather modification freaking conference, okay? And these videos, they have about a thousand views. I mean, I went to geoengineers' faces. And I, you know, and I asked them the hard questions. I talked to the Naval Research Lab. I talked to Raytheon. I talked to Jim Fleming, world's historian. Um, people just don't get it. I mean, I, either that or YouTube is just really getting good and damn, real damn good at censoring people. That's all I can figure. Um, but you can come over to climateviewer.com slash nmod. This is my solution to geoengineering. Hope you guys will support it. If you go there, you can scroll down right about here underneath this graphic, and it'll say videos from the 21st conference. You can see that they're all right here. Interview with Dr. Jim Fleming, the U.S. Naval Research Lab, Raytheon, UCAR, um, Dr. William Cotton. He was part of the Storm Fury Project, steering hurricanes. Um, Daniel Rosenfeld from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Um, Nicoletta Florio from BeHeroic.com. There's me getting interviewed by somebody else. That's me with a Raytheon headset on, hanging out with F-18 pilot, talking about the brand new sensors they're going to put all over America. I hope that people will look into these videos because this this was a uh, an experience to say the least. But it's all in support of something I call the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. Hope you guys will read about that. Right here, download PowerPoint presentation. You can actually go here, and uh, there's slides on that. You can flip through them. You know, like why, you know, why is weather warfare illegal? Why is it undetectable? Um, you know, who's involved in it? Um, infographics. I'm Jim Lee, and these are what I want to, what I expect: transparency and verification. Um, I hope that you guys will look through this uh, Environmental Modification Accountability Act. Um, check out the videos because censorship's a beast. And it, and it goes back to what I was talking about with the sock puppets, the NSA guys, the, the powers that be do not want us breaking free from the old school media, the, the controllers, the, the, you know, the, the bullshit artists on TV. So, for me to you, please continue to support um, guys like myself, guys like Max. You know, there's so many of you out there that that I look up to. I hope that we can break through, um, you know, this this censorship funk. And uh, the only way we're going to be able to do that is if you guys continue to support us. So I'm going to drop my support links in chat. I hope that you guys could pick one and possibly help out. Everything on all three of my websites is completely free of charge oh i didn't even really mention my third website i briefly went there but weathermodificationhistory.com is the junk so guys check it out check out climate viewer 3d it is available at climateviewer.org i hope that you guys will share it around give it a try you'll like it it's not that hard you just come over here, click on that, click on lightning, and go look, you know, at the stuff going on. It's pretty simple. Active volcano eruptions this week. Oh, there's an explosion. It happened here. Um, you want to see some volcanoes in 3D? Come down here to base globe. Click on a satellite image. Click on 3D terrain because it makes it much more fun to look at volcanic activity when... You can see the actual volcano. Let's fly to a different one. That's not a pretty volcano. I don't even like that one. Bad volcano. How's this one look? What we got? Oh yeah. That's a volcano. Boom. In 3D. And these come from the Smithsonian. You can click on that and see which volcanoes are blowing up right now live. Live data mixed with maps that you can't find anywhere else, only available on Climate Viewer 3D. I just realized I'm not even sharing the freaking screen, so let's go back and just let you guys see that real quick. This is what I was actually talking about. Um, yeah, 3D mountains, volcanic eruptions. You can see all of that available only on Climate Viewer 3D. Um, God. 
went into a very long video, but I worked for uh, three to five days trying to put my old map back up. Um, we'll work out the bugs. Um, please report any bugs. Jim at climateviewer.com. Please continue to support my work, and um, I really appreciate you guys uh, staying up late with me and watching this video. So with that being said, attack ideas, not people. This uh, this internet thing, we will get through the censorship, and we will do it when we're armed with information. So please continue to learn, continue to share, and please continue to support my work. And thank you very much for watching. I hope this resonated with you.